It's that time in the month where inflation data is released and anybody who's even a little bit interested in money and finance tries to take a look at the latest data to predict what it all means. Inflation refers to a sustained increase in general price level of goods and services in an economy over a period of time. In other words, inflation is the general rate that goods and services are increasing over time and in that effect it reduces the buying power of your cash. Inflation is caused by multiple factors but it essentially boils down to simple supply and demand. Some of these factors are a decreasing value of the currency which can be caused by printing money therefore increasing the supply and decreasing the demand. An increase in the cost of borrowing or a decrease in consumer and business confidence. Central banks and governments usually aim for an inflation value of around two to two and a half percent. They manage this by modifying fiscal policy, for example, managing the supply of money, increasing interest rates and modifying taxes. The optimal level of inflation does depend on a multitude of different factors, but as I said, most governments and central banks aim for around two to two and a half percent per year. But this is a far cry from where we're currently sat. The newest CPI data out of the US showed that inflation in January was 6.4%. And whilst that is still very high, it does show a slowdown of 0.1% from the data in December, which showed an increase or an inflation of six and a half percent. So whilst we are still in a period of inflation, that inflation does seem to be slowing a little. When stripping out food and energy, looking at just core CPI in America, inflation was at 5.6%, which again is down 0.1% from 5.7% back in December, which does tend to suggest that the Fed strategies are starting to take some sort of effect in slowing down this rampant inflation. On this side of the pond, the news does echo that from America and it shows that inflation is beginning now to slow down. However, our inflation rate is still a lot higher than the US at the moment. With an eye-watching inflation rate of 10.5% clocked back in December, economists expected this to slow down slightly, if you can call it slow down, to an inflation rate of 10.3%, which is still monumental. However, January data's come out and we're actually at an inflation rate of 10.1%. So every cloud and all that. Again, this shows that the Bank of England's interest rate rises are tending to have some sort of impact now. However, 10.1% is still huge. It does, however, look like inflation will be relatively more short-lived than the period of inflation we saw in the 1970s. This lasted for more than a decade with inflation hitting an eye-watering 13% in 1979. So good luck with your mortgages if that happens. While this is good news on the macro scale, it doesn't really impact people that much on a regular day-to-day -day basis. Housing and bills and food and drink contributed most highly to the UK's latest inflation data at 26.7% and 16.7% respectively. And these are probably the two that make the most difference to the general person's finances. People clearly need these things as necessity and it can be very difficult to cut back what people have likely already cut back on. When we look even further into this data, even education, transport and communication are above the 2% inflation target at 3.2, 3.1 and 2.4% inflation in January. The important thing to remember here is that inflation compares year on year. So the inflation data that we're looking at now compares this January to last January. So towards the end of 2022, if we can think back to that point, that was when inflation was running rampant. What that could potentially mean is that as we go through this year, because we're comparing to some massive rates of inflation last year, inflation will look like it's actually coming back down more in line with kind of government guidelines. This will mean that yes, whilst we've had to absorb those previous price rises, the future rises should slow down somewhat back in line with what we're commonly expected of as the two to two and a half percent inflation rate, which would mean that we'd be a lot less strained in our day-to-day -day finances. There's lots of ifs and buts here, of course, and this is all assuming that there's no completely globally changing news coming out, which of course we've not had much of over the last year. But of course, if that is the case and nothing massive does happen, we could potentially start to see inflation slowing down a little. As we've discussed in previous videos, the jury is still very much out on what inflation actually means for the stock market. One way that inflation can affect the stock market is by its impact on interest rates, which of course we're all seeing at the moment. As inflation rises, central banks may raise interest rates to control inflation. 
which can increase borrowing costs for companies and reduce their profits. Higher interest rates can also make bonds and other fixed income assets more lucrative to investors. This can cause people to move their money from more risky stocks to less risky investments in the form of bonds, for example, because the rates are actually at a premium and you know exactly what you're getting there. On the other hand, during periods of inflation, companies can actually raise their prices, which in effect increases the profits. And this, of course, can be really positive for the stock market, especially if you're holding on to companies like for example, British Gas, Shell, or anyone else in energy at the moment. Inflation can also boost the value of tangible assets such as real estate and commodities. Overall, the relation between inflation and the stock market is very complex and it's impacted by a multitude of different elements. Therefore, investors have got lots of different factors to consider when making their investment decisions and inflation is one of the big ones at the moment. That said, I don't think it is any surprise that the market has performed so positively so far during 2023 compared to last year. There are definitely the green shoots of recovery out there at the moment. However, we don't know as of yet if this is just a bear market rally. A bear market rally, also known as a counter trend rally, is a temporary uptick in stock market prices during a bear market which is a prolonged period of declining stock prices. Bear market rallies can occur for a number of different reasons, including positive news, improving economic conditions, or short-term technical factors. During a bear market, investor sentiment is usually negative as we see the prices trend lower and lower. However, during a bear market rally, we see periods of elation and optimism, much like we're seeing at the moment. But of course, you can never tell whether it's the start of the next bull run or just a bear market rally until you've got the benefit of hindsight and you can look back on it and see actually what happened. The dangers here are twofold. One, you start to pile all of your money in and it is a bear market rally and it just declines further and further and further. And two, you think it is a bear market rally, so you don't invest your money and it's actually the start of the next bull run. And you then can't get in at a low price because the prices just go higher and higher and higher. Really, we don't know what's gonna happen, and that's why I just stick to my usual investing approach. For me, I continue to pound cost average into my investments every single month, no matter the news, no matter the stories, no matter how much it's climbed or fallen. I know exactly what my plan is, and I know where it's gonna get me if I remain consistent. Now, of course, past performance is not indicative of future returns. However, I believe that over the long run, the stock market will bounce back, the stock market will recover, and in 30 years time, I'll be sat on more money than I've invested. I did this throughout COVID, throughout the inflation of 2022, and both times I've come out the other side with a grown portfolio and in a far stronger position than I would have been sat on my hands with money in a low interest savings account, just really getting eaten away by inflation. There will of course be some people who keep their money on the side and wait for the, the right moment, but let's be real, how do we know when the right moment is? And if you do get in at the right moment, it's probably just down to lucky timing. There are people out there who are far more intelligent than us retail investors who have a whole lot more data and analytics to look at who still can't predict the bottom. So if they can't, I don't have any faith in my ability to. So for me, it's just about staying consistent, continuing to invest, and just staying up to date with what's going on. We've all got a strategy, we've all got it for a reason, so the best thing to do is just stick to it. This is how my Vanguard portfolio has managed to grow so much in the last three and three quarter to four years since opening it in May of 2019. So if you wanna go and check out my latest Vanguard portfolio update, you can see that one just here because it's just reached over 15,000 pounds. So check that one out next. And if you want to be investing as much cash into your portfolios as possible, or you just need some additional income into your monthly budget, Check out this video on matched betting, which has made me over 12,000 pounds since starting and can make you over 400 pounds every month. I'll see you there.